Welcome to this podcast of Sound Off from July 31st, 2020 with your host, Nate Laux. The guest today on Sound Off is the mayor of LaPorte, Tom Dermody. Now here's your host, Nate Laux. Hello, friends. It's Nate Laux. How are you? I'm glad that you've joined us today, whether you're listening live on 96.7 The Eagle or hometownnewsnow.com, or you're listening to our podcast. We're grateful that you're with us regardless. And today, on July 31st, 2020, we have a, a wonderful guest my guest today is Mayor Tom Dermody of LaPorte, Indiana. Mayor Dermody is a former business owner, state representative, and was elected mayor of LaPorte last year. It's an honor uh, for me to have with us again today, uh, Mayor Dermody. How are you, Mayor? Nate, what kind words. I, f- I figure I'm waiting for the other half now. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I appreciate it. So no, you can- it, it's it's one of those things where I'm, I'm really trying to turn a leaf and be nice to everyone. <laughs> I'm a pastor and I should be nice to everyone. Amen. Though I do have, I have a hard time with some people. So, um, <laughs> and we got some callers coming in, but I'm going to get to those, but I do have a few questions. One of the great things about hosting this show is I do get to ask a couple questions myself first. You control it. So I do control this. Um, and we got some texts coming in. If you do have a question. And again, if you are afraid to ask the question online, you are welcome to text us or email us. You can text us at 219-362-0522, the same number that you call, or you can email us at soundoff at 967theeagle.com, and that will come directly into the studio for us. We'd love to hear your questions or comments, and they'll go directly to uh, Mayor Dermody. So Mayor Dermody, um, uh, we've had a couple guests on that, that have been familiar with the city government. Last week, uh, we had city council president Tim Frankie on. And one of the things that... We love Tim Frankie. Yeah, we do. He was a great guest. Uh, one of the things, though, that's been coming up over and over again is the shortage and the potential shortage of funds for city and municipalities because of COVID-19. How How is the city of LaPorte dealing with that? Well, again, we're financially in a... a decent position right now what's going to happen is i mean we're going to see reductions due to property tax caps which i support but uh, you know the state's going to have a budget year coming up in january and you know people aren't driving people aren't using the gas tax so we're expecting uh an additional i'm going to guess between a half million and a million dollars reduction uh based on what the state may give us uh we may not get uh funding for roads but nick minnick did a fabulous job coming through this year with an additional second million dollars so i think we're going to be set but it's an opportunity um because this isn't going to go away right away things you know you see where businesses are and we like homeowners we like business owners have to adjust and i found that it's a great opportunity to look at things in a different lens, a new lens, and say, why are we doing this here? One of the things we talk about is there's no more. We do it this way because this is the way we've done it for 20 years. And so it's giving us a chance to look at every business, every department, and say, what can we do? How can we do it better? So uh, while no one wants to be in this position, um, people in the community have lost their jobs, not going back to work yet. Um, it's no different. And uh, uh, you know, the police department is one of those areas. We're losing officers because they can go elsewhere and make an immediate ten, fifteen thousand dollars more. And uh, so we're thinking outside the box uh, with our leadership team, Chief Paul Breton and Assistant Chief Nate Toady to say, hey, because we do have a great department and uh, how can we keep them here? What are the things we're going to do to uh, keep them from going? Now, on, on Monday's show, we had a conversation on the what we've been referring to as the CARES Act too, which obviously will probably have a different name with uh, going through the Senate and the House and things like that. Um, it's a the name for the next stimulus bill that they're talking about in Congress. Senate Leader McConnell has talked about this. One of the things that comes up often is more money to municipalities and cities. Are you in favor of that? Is that something you'd like to see in a future you know stimulus bill? Well, sure, we definitely like to see uh, those dollars. You know, from a, a a homeowner, a taxpayer, it's like, you know, at some point, Congress has to deal with the debt. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from that perspective, uh, it's somewhat hard to deal with, but um, we are in the times. And, and people, the unemployment, you can't have where you're paying 600 bucks a week extra and expecting people to go back to work. But, um, and sometimes the zombie businesses that, you know, are out there and they're keeping afloat during this tough time with dollars, sometimes business 
just needs some businesses don't survive and something else comes up and i think that process needs to happen for some all right we're going to take our first caller hello you're on sound off how are you good afternoon uh mayor jeremy this is steve hall steve hollifield class of 84 how are you buddy Good, sir. How are you today? Good. He's so formal with me. I mean, we went to like Kingsbury <laughs> Elementary together. <laughs> yeah. Fifth and but fifth grade attained, champions. You the status. There you go. What's uh, happening? Well, I just have a quick comment, and maybe you have an opinion on this too. But as a businessman, I'm a businessman. Uh, I bought your mask mandate, the governor's mask mandate. Um, this kind of goes against uh, capitalism against the free market system, conservatism. This, I think, should have been left up to the private business owners and the consumer to make the decision about where they want to go, who they want to do business, and how they want to do it. And I think this is eventually going to put a nail in the coffin of a lot of small businesses that are trying to survive and go through this because I consider myself fairly intelligent. The numbers I read from several news sources um, don't make any sense come out to be as bad as everybody thinks thinks it should be so i like what's what's your opinion as a business owner hey i appreciate that steve Steve. and as a business owner yeah i but I would have made the decision as a business owner to put masks on our business. And here's the thing. I've had many small business owners coming to me, retailers saying, we have to do something because we can't afford to be shut down again. We won't survive. And it was more consistency. Um, and again, I am, believe it or not, about less government, but we have had a horrible shutdown uh, that we won't survive a second thing, a second round. And when you look at the CDC, and yes, there are all types of uh, views there, and there is no pandemic, 100-year pandemic playbook. But when you see that masks could make a difference, could keep somebody from, you know, uh, having COVID, I just didn't think it was much to ask if you can't do it for yourself, do it for somebody else out there. And I think there's enough studies that have shown that uh, masks could make a difference. And it's a piece of cloth. And for those that are freedom or die, and I am sorry if you feel like we're overstepping our bounds, but uh, we're going to beat this. And part of this was a simple ask, hey, wash your hands, uh, clean your hands, clean your desktop. And wear a mask. So are you in favor, if I'm hearing you right then, obviously the city was the first one out of local government, then the county went to a mask mandate, then the state did. Are you in favor of the statewide mandate then for masks? Well, I understand why. I mean, nobody wants to wear a mask, you know, but I think if it can help keep our Zorro, government. Zorro likes masks. Yeah, well, okay, Zorro. Zorro. But if it can keep our economy going, keep people working, and the businesses are doing it, many of the retailers, the major retailers are all requiring it, and there are some medical exemptions that are there, but I don't see it as that big a deal or asking too much of the people during a pandemic. Sure. All right. We have some uh, emails and texts coming in as well and some more callers. Let's get to this uh, email here. I think it's an email. Um, if I can read that correctly. If I'm correct, there is a plan for a drive through to pay the water department. How is that going to affect parking around City Hall? Also, has it not been implemented to pay online? Absolutely. And so one thing I want to say about what what is what is he talking about here? Courtney Parthoon, that's absolutely thought of new ways to do things. And one thing with the clerk treasurer's office and I got to see firsthand is when bills are due, you'll get 100 people come rolling in to City Hall to pay their bills, to talk to somebody and so forth. And lives are busy. You're you have family, you have work. You have ball games with kids and everything. You shouldn't have to be taking time out of your busy day to come in, wait in line, pay your bills. So what Courtney Parthoon is doing is using COVID funds so they're not coming out of our property taxes um, is number one using the back part of City Hall and turning that into a drive through of that uh, Larson Danielson local company is going to be doing where, hey, just like a bank, you can put in the the uh, container, zoom it up to the office. The office will take care of it and pay your bills that way. Okay. You can still come up front, drop it off outside, or more importantly, with the technology, you can actually now pay your bills 
from home, from work, from soon to be from your cell phone. Wonderful. And it's just technology so that you can be sleeping in a bed at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, Courtney's thinking outside the box to make it easier for all the residents to pay their bills and also fill out that orange form that you recently received in the mail and you can do it direct from your uh, checking account. So anyway, we're just keeping up with business and how you pay your mortgage, how you pay these other bills. You can now do that in the city. All right. You're on Sound Off. This is uh, the Sound Off today with Mayor uh, Tom Dermody. If you have a question or a comment for the mayor, do call the Liquor Vault on airline at 209-362-0522. You're welcome to text as well. Or you can email us at soundoff at 96.7 The Eagle. Let's take one more caller. Hello, you're on Sound Off. Well, hello, Pastor. How hello, are you? Mayor. How are you doing today? Hey, it's a great day. I'm with the pastor. It doesn't get better than that. I don't know if I'm being told something. I have to go Sunday for a, a <laughs> priest, and then I need an extra day with a pastor on a Friday. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to cover there's, all your bases. There's no hope for some people, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on the other side of the mask issue than Mr. Hollyfield. Uh, sure. I'm a senior citizen. And I want to say thank you for what you've done with the mask. Um, my doctor tells me I had COVID, and I know that I was really sick for a long time. And um, I'm not 100%, but I'm a whole lot better. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Mayor, I survived it once, but I don't think I would again. And I wear a mask whenever I'm in public. Uh because you can catch it again, and that's the whole thing. Um, I don't know why it has to be a political issue about wearing a mask. It's like you say, it's a piece of cloth. In my case, it's a surgical type mask I wear, but us seniors are vulnerable. I mean, everybody is vulnerable if people stop and look. It, It affects people of all ages. And you can track this thing. You don't know where it's going to go. And you don't know what kind of uh, everlasting type or long term, I should say, effects it will have on you. It affects your heart, kidneys, lungs, you name it. And, uh, well, anyway, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say thank you for thinking about the safety of all of us. Hey, real quick, I'm I'm glad you're okay, buddy. Thank you so much. Um, Absolutely. We're glad you're healthy. You hang in there. And you know what? That's what makes LaPorte better because uh, in a unique community, because overall, everybody has come together and are doing for others. And and that's what I love about LaPorte. And I love this community because we all step up and do to help each other. And overall, it's working. That's why our numbers are lower than surrounding counties, because we've been doing the little extra um, help there to support one another. So... Here's a good question. Well, we're going to get to that good question real quick, but we're going to take a commercial break. Thank you so much for listening to Sound Off today. Our guest today is Mayor Tom Dermody, the mayor of the city of LaPorte. We'll be back here in a few minutes. Thanks so much again for listening to Sound Off today. Uh, my guest here is Mayor Tom Dermody. Again, if you have a call or a text or a question, uh, do call or text us in at the Vicar, or Liquor Vault on air line at 209-362-0522, or you can also email us at soundoff at 967theeagle.com. Let's get back to some questions here. Um, here's a question for you. How can you justify almost $700,000 on a boardwalk when the streets are in such disrepair. So what boardwalk are they speaking of? Well, the boardwalk on the southwest corner there of Clear Lake is we're developing in the heart of Laporte plan, which I think you were involved in. Uh, we're going to have a boardwalk for fisher fishermen to fish off of. Bikers can go across, and it's part of the bigger plan. And what I'll tell you is thank you to the great donation from the Healthcare Foundation of Laporte. We were able to do this. And, and hey. Did they fund all of it? Or uh, We had a small, uh, I believe a small portion was done right before I got in. Okay. I think some of the financing. But here's the thing. The Healthcare Foundation's um, focus is not to fix the roads so it's not like that money could be converted over to start fixing the roads we have a repair program we have a road program and you know since 2016 43 percent of the roads or 46 percent of the roads have been done and we're going to continue to move forward fixing fixing roads but you also have to develop a community for our residents and for family members to come back to by providing things 
other than roads. I mean, roads are going to continue to push drug traffickers, you know, addressing those code enforcement. And, and we just condemned two more homes uh, yesterday that were infected with, you know, just a terrible situation. Um cockroaches, different things, and uh, people should never have to live in subhuman conditions. So the road plan, I think we have one. I think if you drive around, you're starting to see roads be done and are decent. Do we have much more work to go? Absolutely. And we have that plan that we put out for everybody to see so you knew exactly what roads uh, could be done. But it takes hundred to $200,000 per mile to do a road. And uh, so I appreciate it. You're welcome to see the plan. You can call me at uh, City Hall or myself, 363-7293, and uh, I will be glad to share that information. I do want to say, too, uh, not to give too much props, but we, we do have a, a on uh, hometownnewsnow.com. If you go there, there's a section for podcasts, and you can listen to the last sound off that we had uh, with uh, city engineer Nick Minnick, who talks a lot about roads and the road funding and how uh, – the plan is put into place. So if you want to know a little bit more in detail about the roads and things like that. Hey, Tom, I do have a question for you, Mayor. Um, you just announced that you're going to close City Hall until the end of August, correct? Well, actually, we're just extending what we've been doing based okay. on the governor's announcement of 4.5 uh, and keeping there. So what we're doing is continuing to we're coming to work every day. We have been, uh, you know, since this all started and we're still going to be there available. I meet people out on the front uh, park bench in front of City Hall. That's where I hold hold meetings. Our city uh, public meetings are uh, are still going to happen. We allow the public to you know attend those. Uh, we will not have a um, meeting this Monday, City Council meeting. But I'm out front meeting people in City Hall. Uh, Technology wise, people can call in, email, and we're getting all our responses. Uh, taken care of to people that need answers. So um, I wouldn't call it closed because we're there every day. We're just trying to keep the individual safe. We did have a COVID situation happen a couple uh, about a couple months ago, and uh, so we're just trying to do uh, be appropriate. Sure. Um, what is uh, we've got a text question in? Thanks so, so much for texting again. We've got Mayor Tom Dermody. Uh, if you have a call or a text, do a call or text into our Liquor Vault on our line at two one nine three six two zero five two two. And here's a question on our text line: What is the North South Corridor idea? I prefer connector, the north south connector. One of the things that I've talked about is getting the truck traffic, removing the truck traffic off of Lincoln Way has to happen. If we want to develop our downtown, uh, the, the truck traffic has to come off there. And we need to relinquish from the state Lincoln Way, get that back in our control, but also provide that the county's been supportive of, and I'm definitely supportive of. Coming off a connector off of uh, Boyd Boulevard there, 35, and coming around up north to the toll road, um, there's opportunity there. I think there were some mistakes made when you try to run a connector through the middle of a neighborhood like on 300 north. Uh, There's some areas that we can do, but uh, when we talk about progress, I think the uh, north-south connector is something that uh, has to happen. All right, we have a couple more calls we're going to take here. I assume those are for us. Let's see. Hello, you're on Sound Off. Uh, yes. How um, are you? Doing fine. Good. Uh, I want to tell the mayor that Tuesday night there was a incident in the middle of the street on Jefferson Avenue. The police were called, and I want to say that our police uh, – performed extremely well they uh, were professional they did let the incident get out of hand and that and i know with you know the limited police force that we have right now especially important i will say that i have taken uh, the city's uh citizen police academy every time we've had it so you know i know what how the police is supposed to work but how are we going to increase the instruction and training for our police officers? Sure. I know there's limits, but, you know, requirements, I should say, not limits. Oh, requirements. requirements about what they have to do, because I've taken some of the classes with the officers as part of the uh, academy. 
All right, yeah, that's yeah, a no, great. That's, a, that's good, a great a question. question. And what I'll tell you first of all, Jefferson Ave on the west side, east side Jefferson. We just condemned a house there. Uh, code enforcement between there and Maple. Uh, we're not tolerating these. Um, landlords that are putting individuals in that don't want to participate in our uh, to make our community better and the hammer's falling and we're not tolerating it so between police between code enforcement we are continuing to address to make people feel uncomfortable that don't want to follow the rules in Laporte so as you talk about the police department one of the things we have to look at we have I think going right now roughly 35 officers and We've had over just over 13,000 calls for the first six months. And police cannot be everything to everybody. We're looking at some technology that for nonviolent crimes that people can, we're going to have to adjust and find out, hey, I may have to file a report on the computer so an officer doesn't have to come right there and then go back, but can focus on being in the neighborhood concentrating on the most important crimes that keep our community safe. And so we are going to be looking at changing the way the police are in the community. We've got a great team. We want to keep our young people, but they can't be everywhere and everything to everybody. Absolutely. And, uh, Again, thank you so much for listening. Today, we've got, as our guest, just a couple more minutes left, but we have Mayor Dermody from the city of LaPorte. If you have a question or uh, a comment, please call or text us in. We just have a couple minutes left. The Liquor Vault on air line is 209-362-0522. I do want to read this real quick because, again, a lot of times I think uh, people call in with concerns and questions, but I do want to read a text we just got real quick here. It says, Mayor Dermody, I agree with you about your city mandate regarding wearing masks. For those objecting to it, I wonder if they would want doctors and nurses not to wear masks when performing surgery or a medical procedure. They wear masks not to protect themselves, but to protect others, the patient. Thank you so much. And then I I agree with that, but also Dusty just texted me and told me to stop clicking my pen. Thank I'm going to blame you. Thank Nate, you, Dusty. I'm that's, not, I think it's I'm not clicking my pen. Actually, I was thinking the same thing, and maybe on your city council meetings you could tell all the people that click their pens as well. <laughs> Dusty, I'm with you, brother. Okay. My got, pen is down. We got another call. Hello. You're on sound off. Hello. How are yes, you? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Uh, I guess I, mine's probably more of a complaint than a question. Uh, uh, I went, went went around by Pine Lake over there the other day by a bar, and the parking lot is just full of people. Is, is that a is that a is that it, or do you want do you want time to address that, or? Well, yeah, I'm I'm on. I'm sure. still on. I thought it was off. No, no, you're on. I hear you. I uh, went around over there by a bar by Pine Lake, and the parking lot was full of people face to face. They got a deck on the side of the bar there. It is full of people face to face. It's off of Park Street there. Okay. And nobody had face masks on. And the inside of the building looked like it was full of people, too. Uh, I think that, personally, that is where you need to shut the bars down because we all know the COVID is spreading. Well, and I well, appreciate that. And the governor, you know, has that authority. Uh, everybody wants to keep the economy going. But just like we have speed limits, you know, people still speed. You know, we put the rules in place. We hope people will look in the mirror and say, what can I do to make sure that we're keeping our community safe for the bigger picture? And uh, you just hope that everybody would do their part, wear their mask, uh, social distance, and uh, do their part. But I appreciate uh the call, and I think those are the little things that will lead to us getting over the hump if everybody can do their part now. All right, lightning round here, uh, Mary Dermot. We've yes. got a couple questions left and not a lot of time. So what is uh, the city of LaPorte doing about the uh, American rubber plant? It's in deplorable shape. It's in terrible shape. The city doesn't own it. Uh, code enforcement, we took a drive uh, last Thursday through that area and said, hey, we can't shut the building down but let's start getting them to clean up the weeds that have been going on for it been ignored for years let's get everything cleaned up uh 
just like we're expecting from everywhere else. Also, uh, Don George Ford, there's an empty lot there. Any advancement on that? Have you seen Lily Lake? I mean, the one thing, and I appreciate the county helping us out, we wanted to clear all that out. And uh, when people go up Pine Lake now, they can look out into Lily Lake, and you see a future, you see ideas. We want to have a public access point there, and uh, I think you'll see some development on that Don Don George property. All right. Um, Also, uh, real quick, anything you want to mention about La Stitch. La Stitch, August 14th. Uh, we're kind of developing uh, our downtown and outdoor event uh, from, I think, six to nine, somewhere in that range, or seven to nine, maybe. You're asking me, and I've got I'm no asking idea. Nate. I, I thought I'd ask the guy that's running the show here. No, I'm, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> anything. Do you love the lights? Yeah, the lights are great. The yeah. lights are great. People are taking photos underneath. So we're going to be smart. We want to be responsible. Uh, if COVID continues, we'll evaluate that. But we want to get people out enjoying the time. All right, Mayor Dermody, we just have about 30 seconds left. I'll give you the last word. What do you got? 363-7293. Text me uh, or follow Tom Dermody, LaPorte Mayor Facebook page, uh, LaPorte City Facebook page. Stay involved, stay engaged, and uh, hang in there. We will get through this, but we're going to continue to push and roll up the sleeves and grind every day for the city of LaPorte. All right, friends. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Sound Off. Uh, Next Monday, we'll be back at 12.30 here on 96.7 The Eagle and hometownnewsnow.com. Be safe. uh, Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining us and voicing your opinion on this edition of Sound Off. The views on Sound Off are those of the host or callers and do not represent the opinion of 96.7 The Eagle, Spoon River Media, LLC, or the sponsors. Sound Off airs every Monday and Friday at 1230. Please mark your calendar and join us again for the next edition of Sound Off on 96.7 The Eagle. Thank you for listening to the Sound Off podcast on 96.7 TheEagle.com.